Notorious anti-Cruz lawyer Jim Walker has taken to Twitter, or now X, to post about cruise ships running down whales up off the coast of Canada. Let's take a look at Jim's tweet, or X. Actually, wait a second. Are you aware that I am on x.com or twitter.com at midships cruise you can check me out i am very active on here and actually i tweeted this lovely retweeted this lovely video of a bear exiting their hibernation period saying anyone else feel exactly like this on disembarkation day that's the high quality journalism you can find by me on twitter jim walker though says a cruise ship struck a whale in the Hecate Strait between here and British Columbia mainland on July 29th, according to Fisheries and Oceans Canada. Let's hop into an article. Actually, before that, before we get into the serious stuff, because this is serious, nobody wants whales to be run down by ships. If you're planning a cruise, I would highly recommend spending a few minutes ahead of time checking out all the items I recommend you cruise with in the Midships Amazon store. It's a great way to support my work and find out what I take with me every time I cruise. Some great, great Alaska gear, especially for rainy, wet, and cold hiking days. Let's get into this article from CTV News Vancouver Island, written by Rochelle Baker. Research group sounds alarm after three whales reportedly were struck by ships off the British Columbia coast. Three whales have reportedly been hit by vessels in northern BC over a 10 day period last month, raising West Coast humpback researchers concerns over the risk shipping poses to the marine mammals. The first report involved a British Columbia ferry vessel, the Northern Expedition, colliding with a whale in Wright Sound on July 20th. On the following day, a second incident occurred involving a boat that transports workers to a local mine. And the third incident occurred July 29th, allegedly, uh, when a cruise ship struck a whale in the Hecate Strait off the British Columbia mainland. Now, it strikes me as odd that they know the exact names and dates of the two other vessels, and yet a massive, massive cruise ship, I would assume massive, with potentially hundreds if not thousands of people on board, they don't even know the name of the ship. So take this with a large grain of salt, a very large grain of salt. No other details about the incidents have been made available. And it's important to note here that there are rules and regulations in place that affect cruisers, you and me, and it affects the speed that the cruise ships are able to travel, particularly at certain times a year when the whales are going to be in this area. Say, for instance, I was in Alaska last week on a cruise heading southbound towards Victoria, British Columbia for the customary three hour stopover at the most boring cruise port on Earth. I'm sorry if you're from Victoria, but y'all need to up your game or something. Anyways, the cruise ship slowed down to four or five knots and it took hours to cover what would normally take a short amount of time. Let's just put it that way. I'm not a mariner. I don't I don't know exactly how long it would take, but it affords you as a cruiser the opportunity to well view this spectacular wildlife that we should make sure we are good stewards of and protective of. And if slowing down cruise ships is something that needs to happen to protect these whales so future generations are able to enjoy them like we are well who are we to really say no i don't think it's really affecting anybody's life that much after all first world problems being stuck on a cruise ship having to see beautiful whales going by outside and oh it's so slow whale research groups on the british columbia coast are getting piecemeal reports about the three incidents but weren't aware of or alerted to the incidents when they happened said Jackie Hildering of the Marine Education and Research Society. Any vessel that hits a whale must report it to the DFO, which that's just fisheries and wildlife in Canada, essentially. That's what that amounts to. However, there's no policy or protocol for vessels involved or DFO to relay information in a timely way to other groups that monitor whales, which are often operating in nearby waters and able to respond to incidents more quickly. Marine traffic and humpback whale populations are both on the rise, often in the same area at the same time, escalating the risk of vessel strikes to humpbacks, the greatest threat to the species of special concern, along with entanglements in fishing gear. Hildering stresses that nobody ever actually wants to hit a whale, but it's also not acceptable just to accept the death of whales as collateral damage there, when there's so much we can do, and the core of it is learning all we can about these incidents. The article goes on to talk about divisive mitigation strategies or safety zones where whales are known to concentrate and overlap with marine traffic 
are necessary regionally and along the length of the British Columbia coast. And just this year, they actually talked about expanding that, that zone immensely. So you might be looking forward to one less port stop in your Alaska cruise coming up in future years as a result of things like this. You know, if we're saving the whales, it's part of being a good steward. I've reported on some places calling cruisers locusts, saying that we come in and ruin everything everywhere we go. I'd like to think that is tangibly false. After all, cruisers do represent a large opportunity to the places in which they visit. But that being said, don't go into somebody else's house and trash the place either and expect them to have any respect for you. Um, as cruisers, we should come in with the utmost respect. And if whales are something that we are hitting with our cruise ships, well, we should probably figure out how not to do that moving forward. Let me know your thoughts on the whole whale incident in the comments down below. Thanks for stopping by the Midships Minutes.